So as of right now, although there have been some very significant advances in terms of the development of small molecules that are oral agents uh, that are very uh, efficacious in CLL, the standard frontline therapy is still chemoimmunotherapy. And in fact, chemoimmunotherapy produces some good results, particularly if a patient is young and or fit enough to tolerate FCR, we know that the median progression-free survival is about five years. So these are very durable remissions. Of course, the short-term toxicity is myelosuppression and infection, and then potential late toxicity, which is rare, but is obviously very serious if it occurs, is treatment-related MDS or AML. So there are downsides to, to chemoimmunotherapy. We now have two oral agents that have been approved, both in the States and in Europe, for CLL, that's ibrutinib, the BTK inhibitor, and idelalisib, the PI3K delta inhibitor. The common theme there is that both of these are B cell receptor inhibitors, and the idea is that when you ligate the B cell receptor, you send a very strong proliferative and survival signal to the cell that you would like to interrupt, which is what these drugs do. They're both oral agents, they're both given indefinitely, and they're both very effective, including in high-risk patients, such as those with a 17P deletion. They both have an approval for relapse CLL. In addition, ibrutinib has an approval for the frontline treatment of patients with CLL and a 17P deletion. But some points to be made are that you, we have very low CR rates with these agents, certainly in the relapse setting, and resistance can develop with both drugs. In fact, there's recently published data that one of the ways patients develop resistance to the BTK inhibitor ibrutinib is by actually forming mutations in the binding site of BTK. So with low CR rates and resistance developing, I think a clear way to go in terms of further development is combination therapies. So we could potentially improve our CR rates and the durability of our remissions. There are many new second generation BTK, SICK inhibitors and PI3K inhibitors in clinical trials, and there are other novel agents that have different mechanism of reaction, such as ABT199 or venetoclax, which is a BCL2 inhibitor. What I think we're going to see in the future are very interesting combinations of novel agents that potentially could then get us CRs, the ability to maybe stop therapy, and prolonged remissions. So are we ready to throw out chemoimmunotherapy? Not so sure. So for example, MD Anderson data, which has been submitted for publication and presented uh, several times, clearly shows that if you take patients who receive FCR up front and have a mutated IGVH gene, at 10 to 14 years of follow-up, about two-thirds of those patients are still disease-free. They're now going back to try and collect MRD data on those patients, and in fact, anecdotally, some of them are MRD negative. Are those patients cured? I'm willing to go out on a limb and say they probably are. Even if they're not cured, if they're still in remission 10 to 14 years later, after six months of therapy, I think that's a pretty nice endpoint. So I'm not so sure we're willing to throw out chemoimmunotherapy too quickly, at least in that good risk subset that may have a cure fraction with FCR. So it'll be very interesting going forward to see how good the novel combinations are and whether we can supplant chemoimmunotherapy even in the good risk group of patients with a mutated IGVH. Thank you.